Hello to everyone who watched this video about our humanity project. Today, I and my group mates Sardar, Elshan, and Aidan will talk about distribution of early humans all around the world and Azerbaijan. Here is our agenda. Name it for you. First, we we'll talk about humans uh, and their creation, then their living requirements, movement of people to build settlements, movement to Caucasus and Azerbaijan, their lifestyle, and discovery of early settlements in Azerbaijan. So uh, now I give speech to Sardar. He will talk about the creation of humanism and their living requirement. We all hear you, Sardar. Thank you, Jalal. So, first of all, we should start with the fact that when we say humans, we consider homogeneous, not the homo sapiens, which is modern humans. That's why it's shortened and used humans more. Uh, but uh, under the homo genus, we have several species, homo sapiens, homo habilis, homo erectus, homo neanderthalis, uh, and so on. However, uh, only uh, homo sapiens has survived because the previous ones couldn't survive because they did not fulfill the living requirements that were mandatory to continue um, continue surviving. Uh, the last human species before Homo sapiens was uh, Neanderthalensis, which went extinct 40,000 years ago uh, because of the survival of the fittest rule of nature. As you see in this picture, uh, here we have uh, Australopithecus, which is not homo, it's not human, it's another type of, which we can say monkey, but it's not monkey really. The rest are uh, the other types of homo, for example, homo sapiens we see, homo uh, erectus, homo neanderthalensis and stuff. And the last one is homo sapiens, which is capable of thinking uh unlike the other homo species we mentioned the living requirements of humans not only humans but also like considering all the animals all the living things should have living requirements in order to survive and continue living in future for human there are a lot of living requirements that were mandatory to be to be fulfilled in order to continue the <clears throat> continue surviving. So we're gonna switch to the next slide. Okay, the living requirement. First of all, access to drinking water. As you may know, humans can survive up to three to four, three or four days without drinking water. So it it makes uh, water our first priority. Being able to hunt down wild animals, uh, this is another source of our food, uh, and as you may know, up to three to three or four weeks, human can survive without eating. Uh, if not provided, human can die to starvation. Uh, then we have taming animals. Actually, this is not a mandatory living requirement, but made human lifestyle much easier as you see in um right below picture there's a uh it's a actually scene from a game that show that uh thought that showed uh, previous humans that were able to tame uh wild animals and use them as their uh, pet or companion to hunt down the others then we have Crafting tools. Crafting tools actually came from Homo habilis. Um, Homo habilis was, were able to use tools and craft them, and that was genetically uh, and genetically sent to the Homo sapiens too. So it's also mandatory in order to survive, craft new tools, and develop the civilization. Being able to heat themselves. Humans are hot-blooded, warm-blooded uh, species, that's why warm-blooded species uh, use energy to heat their body, temp to increase their body temperature, but in very cold situations, for example, in uh, closer to Arctic or Antarctic sides, 
it was much colder, so they needed some campfire uh, to heat themselves up and help their body with heating it. Uh, then we have reproduction, which is uh, debatably the main point of living of all living things. Like, uh, we can say that that's the main goal of life. Um, we did not show reproduction in this picture, but like, we included population, which is the last point, even though it's much more important. Uh, as you see in the picture, um, second picture on the left, left side, there is campfire that uh, represents being able to heat themselves. Then there is population. Then there is uh, population is for defending themselves because like more species in a group or tribe. Uh, more chances of survival, which uh, develops the civil as a civilization and helps them to survive easily. For example, there are like some in tribes. There are like some uh, humans that are classified by doing something. For example, men are usually classified as hunters, uh, and they are grown like that. They grew up by hunting animals and stuff, getting master on it, and teaching the younger generations in order to continue uh, the survival of the population. Then, um, safety. Yeah, safety is also included into population because um, you provide, not you, but like tribe members provide uh, safety to each other. And not only tribe members, also several, for example, using geographical places, for example, caves in this uh, part, they use caves to uh, isolate themselves, to protect from wild animals, and sleep and have like nice camp around it, and survive. Then we have strength, which is the main factor in males especially. Even though women are capable of hunting too, uh, men are genetically stronger than women. That's why uh, their males are often uh, go to hunt. Men often go to hunt, and uh, they just they are responsible for hunting down animals and collecting some food uh, to help the population. Uh, thank you so much, and now we're gonna continue with Elshan. Okay, so now I'd like to talk about the settlement migration, or just the movement of people to different places so that they can uh, uh, live better for uh, many reasons, as I'll get into now. And they include um, many push factors and pull factors. And push factors include stuff like uh, environmental factors, which is... Um, just like uh, natural disasters and stuff like earthquakes and uh, uh, disastrous weather, which can lead to stuff like um, flooding or just the ruining of like farming soil and stuff like that, which in turn also affects stuff like the second point, which is uh, famine, which is one of the biggest reasons for migration in the ancient times is when people were running out of sources for food, either they had um, <clears throat> They're, they couldn't grow crops, or they couldn't hunt any prey, or they couldn't, uh, or just couldn't get food. So they would look for new places where maybe there would be a different, like, water source where they could fish instead of farming. Um, and then another one is uh, warfare and tribal conflict, which, I mean, war is, uh, like, conflict between people is as old as people themselves. So it, it was happening now, and it's happened way back in ancient times and it's uh, always a thing nowadays we call them refugees people who uh, run away from their country or area because of war just to seek a safer place to live so that they don't risk dying every single day just because of other people and then we have general pull factors like uh, security in places where there isn't war and it's actually safe to live um, for the most part um yeah better lands um 
generally just meaning better crop um, quality, like crop and in the soil, and the richness and fertility, allowing them to um, avoid starvation by crop failing. So that's a big factor. And then there's advancement and technology, which um, technology not necessarily in the sense of like electronics, like we understand today, but stuff like uh, advancements in agriculture and irrigation, which is like when they dig canals for water to flow and for their plants to grow better. And also developments and stuff like, you know, I said, farming and ranching and cattle raising, cattle breeding, stuff like that. It's, um, it's very attractive for people. So they would move to places with um, more advanced just living. Uh, now I'd like to talk about a uh, example, which is here in Mesopotamia, uh, back in ancient times. Um, push factors for people uh, leaving Mesopotamia uh, during those times included definitely warfare, because of places like uh, Assyria and Babylon were always warring against each other, and at some times it was very dangerous to live. So many people understandably sought to uh, escape this land and um, find a safer place. And this stuff like droughts and floods was definitely huge because of the location between the uh, Euphrates and the Tigris rivers, which were very uh, definitely very helpful for the people and were the source of most of their resources. But they were still very dangerous as the water level was always fluctuating and there were floods all the time and it would just ruin their crops and stuff like that and the recovery could be very difficult but then then again full factors for um mesopotamia still include its very rich um and good farming soil it was even um so great that they uh they, they called it the the fertile crescent the area because it was so great for farming and then uh trade and civilization because uh mesopotamia and places like Babylon were uh, among the first places in the world to really start urbanizing and to have a, a huge amount of trade and commerce and stuff like cultural exchange, which um, attracted many migrants who wanted to benefit from that uh, urban economic lifestyle. So yeah, that concludes that part. Now, moving on. Thank you, Sardar, for giving me a speech. As I said, I will talk about the world that we created in Minecraft. Uh, so let's begin. As he, as he said, they used to try to uh, find uh, uh, caves uh, where, which, which was located in flood areas so that easily they can find animals like this cow or others other animals like sheep or etc and also the cave which was located near the water source so that they can easily access to water because they used, didn't used to have a, a transportation either that they can easily take this water and I don't know drink or etc so they used to try to find the cave which is which was located uh, near to water source and which is located in flood places and in their case there were not that much things uh, to talk about only they used to have uh, one on fire and which was protected by two or maximum three people and uh, because they didn't want to uh, uh, let this fire to uh, i don't know down so that they used to protect it and the, the some kind of religious such as Zoroastrianism came from uh, this situation. They didn't used to want, and they didn't used to want to uh, let this fire down. So, so that they used to protect this fire. So anyway, uh, also in their, uh, in their caves there were such kind of some tools they used to use. And etc. They didn't have, they didn't used to have many accessibility, and uh, because it was all human, what you're expecting. Uh, anyway, but I I now give my speech to Alshan. He will continue our uh, project, and he will talk about other things. And thank you for listening.
Thank you, Alshan, for giving me speech. Now, as I said, I will talk about the movement to, to Caucasus and uh, other regions. Uh, early humans likely to migrate into uh, Caucasus region, including Azerbaijan, for a variety of reasons. And one of the main factors was availability of resources. The Caucasus offered the diverse of a uh, diverse range of inhabitants, including forests, grasslands, and rivers, uh, which was provided ab abundant food resources such as uh, game animals, fish, and ed edible plants. Additionally, the Caucasus region served as a natural corridor connecting different parts of Eurasia. This is me. This is um, this made it. Um, fa uh, favorable for early humans migration, allowing them to move between different areas in search of resources and favorable uh, climates and in new territories. The presence of caves and rocks shelters in the region also played a role. The, these natural form, you know, formations provided shelter and protection from the uh, elements, making them attractive places for early humans to settle and establish a temporary and uh, even long-term camps. Furthermore, the uh, Caucasus region's strategic location between Europe and Asia made it a cro uh, crossroads for cultural exchange uh, tra and trade. This is likely to attract different groups of early humans who bought, the, uh, who bought with them their unique own skills, technologies, and ideas contributing to their uh, uh, cultural uh, diversity of region. Overall, the availability of resources and geographical location and the presence of natural shelters all played a part in driving early humans to Caucasus region, including Azerbaijan. And it's fascinating to think about how these factors influenced the movement and settlements of our agency. Now, my dear uh, group mate will talk about the uh, Another part of this project, which is about um, that was all that I can speak for now. Now, my dear groupmate Elshan will talk about their lifestyle, and yeah, that's all for me. Okay, so now I'll talk about the lifestyle of the average person living in the Caucasus in the Middle Ages, including Azerbaijan. Um, the society was generally uh, the feudal society, and which means that there was basically the nobility, the artisans, and um, the, clerg the clergy, and the peasants who worked for lords and generally could not move up without like great difficulty. So most people lived as peasants. Um, the economy was very much agrarian, which means it focused on farming and um, raising the cattle and and goats and sheep as well. Uh, they grew many crops such as wheat and barley and also grapes and fruit. Um, more interestingly, there was many cultural achievements like um, our great poets like Nizami Genjavi and people like uh, Kagani Shirvani, who were great poets who wrote a lot of uh, um, poetry back then. And there were uh, also many architectural uh, marvels created during this time, like our Maiden Tower and the Palace of Shirvan Shahs in Shamakhre. So yes, it was a very uh, great time for culture. And yeah, that's that. Uh, thank you, Asham, for the information. Uh, so we listened to uh, migration and lifestyle of people uh, in the Caucasus, including Azerbaijan. Now I'm gonna tell that how people discovered that there was living uh, of early humans in Azerbaijan. Uh, as we already know, the science of uh, archaeology studies the distance past humanity through the remains of material culture. 
So one of the most significant archaeological sites in Azerbaijan is Azad Cave. Uh, this um, uh, Azad Cave was discovered by the Paleolithic Archaeological Expedition of Azerbaijan National uh, Academy of Sciences under the leadership of Mehmet Ali in 1960. Uh, and it is uh, considered to be site of one of the most ancient location uh, of proto-human presence in Eurasia. And Neanderthal, uh, like Joe Bond, found in 1968, is assumed to be over 300,000 um, years old. And those one of the most oldest proto-human remains found in Central Asia. And it's the discovery give rise to uh, Azakman term of Azakman. Now on the next slide uh, is... Uh, now on, the, now on the next slide, uh, it is an, another evidence for um, Azerbaijan that people used to live in this uh, area. Uh, this is Gobstan Rak art. Uh, the Gobstan Rak province were found in uh, the 1930s. Uh, at that time, there was activity in nearby stone factory, and the area was uh, piled high with enormous uh, stone rocks. As the area cleared, uh, the images become more noticeable. So the Gobastan rock art uh, discovered. So in the first picture, uh, you can there was there is described dancing yalu, which is Azerbaijan national um, dancing. And the second picture is uh, uh, about animal. And images of animal on Gobstan rocks were depend very depending on the periods of um, periods because of the change in the hunting targets. Moreover, uh, this Gobstan rock art cultural landscape represents the history of humanity from Upper Paleolithic era to the Middle um, Ages in Eurasia. It is uh, situated at the uh, southeast end of the Greater Caucasus Ridge in Azerbaijan, and it is located at approximately 64 kilometers southwest from the center of Africa. So from all of these evidences, um, you can understand that early humans used to live in uh, Azerbaijan from the first age, and our... Uh, and with our archaeological expeditions, people discovered uh, these areas. So that was it. And these are the references that we used. And, uh, and if you want to have more information about this topic, you can visit these links. Thank you for your attention.